Hey, everybody. Great to be back with you today. I'm Shannon Lee, the Managing Director at Win Without Pitching. And today, I want to give you a glimpse inside one of our virtual sales training workshops. We run these about six times a year. They are four days in a row, three hours each day, and you walk away fully trained in our frameworks for selling. How to qualify, how to have a value conversation, how to write a one-page three-option proposal, and how to facilitate a closing conversation. Today, I want to show you how we model conversations for you in the workshop before we pair you with a partner and send you to a breakout to practice on your own. Now, role-playing is a lot of fun, I think, and I get to role-play with Blair and my coaching team all the time. And so this role-play that we're going to show you today is Blair and I modeling the qualifying conversation. And I love to role-play with Blair because he's always trying to trip me up. So it's good fun. We come into these conversations with no prep, right? I bring a scenario, he brings a scenario, one of my coaches brings a scenario, and we just go for it. Because the, the thing that we're trying to help you master and learn is the framework itself. So it really doesn't matter what kind of conversation you're bringing. We want you to really follow the framework and master that, and then begin to layer on your subject matter expertise and some of these other elements of the conversations that happen in the sale. So check it out, see what you think, and join us in January for our next workshop. There's always a workshop for sale on the website. This next one comes up January 15th through the 18th, and I'd love to see it in there. Cheers. Okay, yeah, you're you're uh, you're the consultant, so you drive. Okay, great. Uh, just give me the quick context of who you are and what you're reaching out about today. So I'm I'm going to be a and Shannon doesn't know what I'm doing. I try really hard to trip her up and put her <laughs> in difficult positions. Um. I'm going to play the marketing director at a group of credit unions. And I've sent you an email saying, I want to talk about a new website. Great. Okay, great. Here we go. Hey, Blair, it's great to uh, have a chance to have a conversation with you today. Looking forward to learning more. Yeah, I, I need to let you know, I only have 12 minutes for this conversation. No problem. We actually have a framework that we follow and we cut right to the chase because we want to find out in this first conversation, are we a good fit to work together? If we are and decide we want to keep talking, then we'll set up a conversation with you and the right people from your side around the table to, to really explore how are we going to measure success? What's the value we can create? Then we'll go back and sit down and think about ways we can work with you and come back together that same group in a final conversation and show you some options for ways to move forward well the so, right people on my side is just me so let's let's go no problem we'll explore that okay i'm gonna hit you with the big picture question first you and i are sitting down three years from today and you're really happy what's happened in those three years to make you so happy i have a new website <laughs> that's it huh no. Um, okay, so three years from today, we're talking. I'm happy. Yeah, well, we're looking for a new website. I'm, I'm happy if we have a new website that works. Okay. So does that mean the website today doesn't work? Yeah, that's the million dollar question. It kind of works for the old model, but all banking is moving online. Our audience is aging. And we're, we're basically, we're, well, like, quite frankly, we're kind of in trouble. We're like, like our, our young people don't bank with credit unions. They bank with banks because our technology has not kept pace and we need a new website to uh, allow us to compete with the online banks and even the online versions of the legacy banks. Like we're, we're basically getting destroyed and um, I'll be happy if I still have a job in three years and I'll still have a job in three years if the website is on par with what um what our competitors can do yeah that, thank you thank you so much for going a little deeper there because there's always something that drives it right like what's really going on and i appreciate you sharing it's a lot it's a lot happening a lot of pressure on you and the credit union so that's helpful to know can i back up a minute and just see why you decided to reach out to our firm today uh, well, you were a last minute addition. I had my list of four agencies that the RFP already went out to. Um, and then my boss uh, wanted me to have a conversation with you. Okay, great. Your boss is who? The CMO? Is the vice president of marketing and customer experience. Okay. And how do you know how did he find out about us? Uh, she, I think it was, I don't, 
I think it was a board member who wanted us to talk to you. And I don't remember who the board member is or why. Okay. All right. Good. Have you had a chance to pop onto our website and learn a bit more about our expertise in this area of credit unions and banking? Uh, no. Okay. I might decide to follow up with uh, some information there for you, just so you have a better sense of who we are and our expertise in this area. It's great that your boss and a board member knows about us, but I want to make sure that you're up to speed as well. So we'll talk about that at the end. Okay. So there sounds like there's some urgency to this effort. Can you give me a sense of when you're hoping to have this website launched? ASAP. And what does ASAP mean? It means as soon as possible. Like really, we're in a hurry. Okay. Oftentimes, a hard driving deadline like that can become more expensive just because it potentially means buying the capacity of our firm to get it done if it's really ASAP. So I like to dig into that a little bit more just to see what the reality of flexibility in the schedule is. Well, I'm feeling pressure yeah. from my boss and my boss is feeling pressure from her boss and the board. Um, and I don't know that we have a timeline per se, um, but I know the board, meet, the board meets quarterly and they're looking for big progress at every meeting. And the most recent meeting was last week. So I'm not under the illusion that we're going to have a new website because there's so much we need to do with it. Um, in three months from now, but we need to have a firm hired in place plan to be, we need to have begun actively working the plan. Uh, my boss's boss needs to be able to show up to the board meeting showing good progress. Okay. When's the next board meeting? It's uh, roughly three months from now. Okay. Let's shift gears a little bit and just talk about the process. So aside from yourself and, and probably your VP of marketing and customer experience, who else will be a part of the team making the decision which agency to move forward with? Uh, it's just my decision. Um, well, and my boss has to sign off on the decision. And what does that approval process look like on your end once you decide which firm you need, you want to work with? I'm talking to five firms. I'm going to send you an RFP if um, if we both agree that there's a fit after this call. And then um, we're going to get a uh, you to submit a credentials document and uh, and uh, give us some early thoughts on our situation. And then we will um, invite two or three firms to come in and make presentations. Um, my boss and I will make the decision and then um, we'll hire that firm. Will the board play any role in final sign off? Given the pressure? There might be a rubber stamp required from the board. Okay. You mentioned RFP, and I want to let you know that we don't typically respond to RFPs. How do you get work? Well, we're experts in our category. And so people seek us out to solve these kinds of challenges for them. So we don't find ourselves often in a competitive bidding process. How do I hire you? Through conversations like this, where we come to better understand if we're a good fit. And then if we decide at the end of this conversation, yeah, let's keep talking. I would want to sit down with you and your VP of marketing and customer experience and have a conversation solely focused on the value that can be created through this work and get a clear understanding of how we're going to measure success and see if we can come to an agreement coming out of that conversation that feels right to actually put some options in front of you in the form of a proposal. Uh, I'm talking to five firms and I'm in a bit of a hurry here. I kind of understand your point where you're coming from, but I'm not sure that that's going to fit with our timeline. That's fine. It might not. And that's OK. And we'll we'll decide that at the end of this call. It might be that this isn't the right fit the right time around. Let me ask you a question about level of investment, though. What kind of an investment are you looking to make in this new website to get it done? Uh, we've got a budget, but I'd rather not tell you what it is. And why is that? I want to see what you think it's going to cost. Can I ask if there's appetite to actually look beyond just creating a new website to 
get things turned around at the bank in a different way from a digital experience and customer experience. Well, yeah, all of that's on the table, but it's not part of this RFP. Like it's, a, it's something that we, you know, a, a new website for a bank, especially an old school bank like ours, a credit union is effectively a new business model. So like we're everything's, everything's up in the air, but I'm talking to you because we need a new website. Yeah, it, it understood. I, I understand the pressure you're up against, and I'm certainly not trying to be difficult. I think we just might have a difference of opinion that the website is the strategy. I think that's the thing, one of the deliverables, but it might behoove us to take a bigger look at what's happening to drive the challenges that you're facing and respond with the right kinds of tools and strategies to get that corrected. So that would be an infer, you know, conversation we're interested in having if you and your VP are. Um, I, I'll take it back to her. Okay. So typically for a website, something, you know, similar to, to what you're talking about here, it could look like 500,000 on the high end. It could look like maybe a hundred thousand on the low end. How does that range sit with you? The low end sits fine with me. Okay. Okay. I think I have what I need. I would like her to recommend our next step be you and I sitting down with your VP though, to just have a more informed conversation about what are we really trying to achieve here? And what kind of value do we think we can bring if we were able to help you? And from there decide, yeah, should we keep talking or not? Shannon, I'd rather just send you the RFP and get your RFP response so that I can proceed with the process as I've laid it out. I'm not opposed to taking a look at it, but we're not going to respond any further until we can sit down and just talk to the larger team. There's a lot at stake here. You're under a lot of pressure, if I'm understanding things correctly from the conversation. And I want to be an ally to help uh, really explore. Is there something we can really do to do some turnaround work for the bank? But that's going to require one more conversation with you and your VP, I think, before we could all feel comfortable moving forward any further. No promises, but I'll ask. I'll send you the RFP. You have a look at it. I'll ask. I'll let you know what she says. Okay. Sounds good. Can we touch base on that uh, tomorrow morning? Is that enough time to check in with her? Yeah. If you haven't heard from me by noon, just send me a note. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Thanks, Blair. Thanks, Shannon.